Hey everybody, it's great to see you today. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we're walking through the Bible in a year. Today is May 20th and we are back in the history books. We have taken a journey through the Psalms and now we are looking at the beginning of the reign of King Solomon. Solomon was the son of David and Bathsheba and you'll recall a while back we said goodbye to King David who had lived a very long life and he lived to be a ripe old age and today King Solomon takes his rightful place on the throne. You know we see all Israel behind him today which is not a small feat considering that all the people were behind him all of the people in unity uh, and, uh, and, and direction that that doesn't happen very often but he Solomon is able to usher in a 40-year reign of peace and he does this because he makes some very wise but difficult political decisions at the beginning of his reign and one of which we're going to talk about today that really propagated these 40 years of peace Solomon had more riches and splendor than any other king ever in Israel. The only one that will trump him in this will be Jesus, the King of Kings. When he comes during his second coming to usher in his millennial reign, he will literally be king in Israel, but king over the whole earth. And that is a time that we will talk more about this year, but certainly something that we have to look forward to. Second Chronicles 1.1 says, Solomon took firm control of the kingdom, for the Lord was with him and made him powerful. Now that is a scripture if there aren't any other scriptures that give good reason for why we need to stay in the word and understand the word because the word explains things to us what's really 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 happening and here it says that Solomon's success and prosperity was because the Lord was with him. Anytime we feel like we have firm control over anything in our life is because the Lord our God is with us in that. We can be sure of that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now we read a story today about Adonijah and he gets, he gets executed today. And Solomon orders that this man is put to death. What in the world did he do? Why, 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 why was this judgment? It was just, but why was it so just? So let me give you some background for this. Adonijah was a another son it was one of his brothers like a half brother so it was another son of David his father by another woman it wasn't Bathsheba they didn't share the same mom but they did share the same dad and remember we were talking about Solomon laying a firm foundation for peace well one of the ways he did that was he had to deal with his father's enemies it was widely known that Adonijah who was an older brother to Solomon thought that he should be king. And this was a scheme. When he went to Bathsheba, which was Solomon's mom, and he lied a couple of places. The commentary said that he, he did lie and that there weren't any other examples in his life that would lead us to believe that he was a God-fearing person, that he was as pious as he says or he leads on to believe, but really that this scheme was about him wanting to be king. But he convinces Bathsheba that, he, that his, um, his request is honorable and all he wants is this woman, uh, Abishag, to be his wife. So, you know, you go to a woman, and, and it seems like Bathsheba here is a little bit sentimental. She says, oh, I can make that happen for you. That seems like an honest enough request. I will ask Solomon for you. So Bathsheba goes. It describes all the pomp and ceremony of him getting another uh, seat for, for her at his right hand. And he says, what is it that you desire? And Bathsheba asks him on behalf of Adonijah for Abishag's hand in marriage. Solomon immediately sees through the scheme and in, 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 well, in dignified anger, he says, I can't believe it. That, you know, I can just hear him say, Mom, I can't believe you didn't see past this scheme. Now, how is it, that's the question that we're going to look at today, that Solomon knew? Well, there are a couple of clues that give it away. Abishag was a member 
of King David's harem. He didn't have any relations with her, but as part of the harem, she, along with the other women, were entitled to part of the inheritance. So had she married him, um, he could have claimed some right to the throne, and Solomon was not going to have any of that. The people were right now behind Solomon, but if Adonijah had come with this semi-correct claim to the throne, it would have seemed right to them, he could have very easily turned the hearts of the people, divided the loyalties, and uh, there you have it. Solomon would not have had all the people behind him. In one of the history books it said, taking possession of the harem of a deceased king was actually equivalent to establishing a claim upon the throne. So that was the culture of the day, that was the political nuance that was going on behind the scenes that we wouldn't know unless we knew the history of those days. Solomon saw right through it, Bathsheba didn't see it, and that is why um, Solomon acted the way he did. He saw it as a frontal attack on his right to be king, and he had to put a stop to it, and that he did. Now, uh, he wasn't the only one, Adonijah, that was um, hurt by or affected negatively by this scheme. The priest, Abiathar, was actually um, affected by this, and that's because he sided with Adonijah. He really could have been executed for conspiracy against the king, but Solomon did not kill him. He just fired him, and he told him he couldn't be a priest anymore. So he was sent home, he was sent packing, and the interesting thing is in sending him home packing it fulfilled a prophecy that we read about back in 1 Samuel that we might have even forgotten about. I wanted to share it with you today. Abiathar was one of the ones that had carried the ark into Jerusalem and that was why I think Solomon had a tender heart toward him and didn't kill him but just fired him. But firing him was part of God's plan and we know that because looking back in 1 Samuel 2.30 which says, let me read that to you, a time is coming, says the Lord, when I will put an end to your family serving as priests. These were the descendants of, of, um, of Eli. Remember back in 1 Samuel, Eli and his sons were not, not very good um, at following the Lord. Eli was, but he didn't raise righteous, God-fearing children. And God said back then that he was going to put an end to that. Well, Solomon firing Abiathar actually fulfilled that prophecy, and that was the end to that family line serving as priests. We also read today that Solomon asks for wisdom. This is a great story. If you haven't read it yet, you'll definitely want to read this in 1 Kings chapter 3. The Lord asks him, what is it that you seek? And he could, he could have asked God for anything at this point, but what he did was he asked for wisdom wisdom to govern the people wisely as God would have him govern. What was God's response? God loved this request and he loved it because it displayed a selfless nature, it was wise, and it was something that he was asking, Solomon was asking God to do so that he could bless others. God loves those kinds of prayers. When we intercede, he loves it when we intercede on behalf of others. And he, he loves it when we ask for things. Of course, the Bible says that we can pray for what we need. We're always uh, allowed and supposed to pray, um, petition things uh, that we need for ourselves. However, when we pray for someone else or ask for God to give us gifts, for instance, a teaching gift, a gift of giving. Give us gifts that will actually bless other people. He is most delighted to honor those 
um, those prayers. And in the scripture today, we see that he did give Solomon the gift of wisdom. And we know from the history books that Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. This is how he got that way. And I also think, think it's very interesting that it, the, the reading today alludes to the definition of wisdom. How do we understand what wisdom really is? And we see that being wise and living wisely and making wise decisions comes from being able to make decisions and govern situations in our own life in a way that would be God-fearing and that would please God. That really is being wise. So I wonder, how long has it been since you have asked the Lord for more wisdom in your life? Ask for uh, discernment to apply in a certain situation, but certainly wisdom so that you can better manage the affairs of your own life and your old household. You know, wisdom comes from the Lord. Wisdom is a person, and it only comes through a personal relationship with the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. And through the Holy Spirit, He will give us wisdom as we ask. And this is something that we can ask for each and every day. I think I mentioned before that I've started to pray first thing in the morning when I get up, Lord, please give me a great measure of your spirit this day. Because I've come to realize that if I have his spirit living in me, I have everything I need. Everything I need to face the day ahead, I have if I have him. And that is my prayer for you. Do you know the Lord? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Will you pray for an infilling, a new infilling and a new anointing of the Spirit for you this day? Well, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. We're going to continue on tomorrow. I pray that you will continue to join me through the Bible study, and I can't wait to see you again. See you then. Shalom.